Good morning, folks. Glad you made it to the upload. We got a lot of important Second Amendment news. And today, we will be discussing House Resolution 44. So let's get right to it. So as of right now, at the time of the release of this video, an hour or so after this, Congress will be voting on whether or not to nullify the ATF's new pistol brace final rule. Now, what you do need to know about what to expect about this nullification vote on the pistol brace rule, I will reveal at the end of this video. So make sure you stay until the end to find out that very important information that you don't want to miss. So right now, the ATF is taking a serious legal beatdown. And this beatdown has been going on for weeks now. The ATF has lost numerous lawsuits over the last few weeks and months. Most of the outcomes of all of these cases is what the pistol brace would be standing on. The fact that the ATF has been losing so many cases, the pistol brace is standing on very, very shaky legs. So with that being said, let's get down to the meat and potatoes and let's watch how this pistol brace rule is about to go down as oh my God! Oh geez, oh my God! one of the greatest ATF fails in ATF history. But real quick, if you think the ATF's pistol brace rule is on the brink of failure, support the Second Amendment right now by clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. So basically, what a markup is when negotiating terms of an agreement, a version of the draft agreement produced by the lawyers acting for one of the parties, showing changes, usually black line, to an earlier version produced by the other side. So in this case, Congress would be rewriting the ATF's original version. Okay, so the Congressional Review Act is a law that allows Congress to review new federal regulations issued by government agencies through an expedited legislative process. It's going to happen almost instantly. You will see in about an hour or so. So Congress can pass a joint resolution to overrule once the rule has been repealed. Now, the Congressional Review Act also prohibits the reissuing of the rule in substantially the same form or the issuing of the new rule that is substantially the same unless reissued or new rule is specifically authorized by a law enacted after the date of the joint resolution disapproving the original rule. Congress has a window of 60 legislative days to disapprove of any given rule by a simple majority vote. Otherwise, the rule will go into effect at the end of that period. So that would be that 120 days if they were not able to exercise this nullification, which you'll see in a few minutes why I gave you a heads up on what to expect. So speaking of 120 days, the ATS proposed pistol brace rule is currently in the middle of the 120 day period, which is amnesty or tax forbearance or whatever you want to call a trap. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. But we are right maybe like one day off from the halfway point. So gun owners, you know, I'd like to know down in the comments how many people on this thread or watching this video have already registered a firearm or all of your firearms or any firearms due to this tax forbearance period or the amnesty. Leave it down in the comments. So again, which I've stated earlier in the video, the House's attempt to nullify the ATS pistol brace rule will be voted on today at 10 a.m. in the House Judiciary Committee. The joint resolution needs a simple majority vote in the House and the Senate to pass. However, even if it passes both of them with flying colors, we know that there is a president, old sleepy Joe Button, will have to sign off on this. And I don't think nobody watching this video expects that to happen. And it's all good. But what this does is it brings out the fangs and it shows the true color of everybody who are gun controllers or everybody who's with the gun control. So that's the good thing about this is that we just got to pay attention and watch how everybody is moving towards this overreach and we got to look at them for what it is so the joint resolution provides uh the gun community with a little insight it lets us see the true character of those who say they're with us and those who say they're against us so that's the good thing about this markup it says the entire house joint Resolution 44 is 13 lines that disapproves the rules submitted by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, known as the ATF, 
relating to factoring data for firearms with attached stabilizing braces. Uh, the resolution states that such a rule shall have no force or effect. So they're basically saying that there's no way that this can have any force or effect on the law. So what do y'all think about that? The resolution states that such a rule shall have no force or effect. Damn. So this will be a very quick process. It's not going to be long. I can't tell you exactly how many minutes, but uh, yeah, don't log off because I'll probably be going live. I'm not 100% sure. I can't guarantee, but I may go live and show you exactly what's going on. We can just go ahead and chop this up and put it as one more notch under the belt for the Second Amendment. And I'm glad that somebody is finally standing up to, to these agents or this agency and telling them that, hey, man, enough is enough. Somebody has to speak up for the people because, you know, we don't have the voices. Now, we have some of the tools to help combat it. But to see somebody with the authority tell these people what it is, is definitely great to see and it's definitely great to hear. I can't say enough about Jim Jordan, Judge Reed O'Connor, and Thomas Massey, or some of these politicians who are actually standing up for the Second Amendment. You know, I, I can't say enough thank yous for that. This is why this is such a great moment going to the victory that you can just start to see the air coming out of the ATF. You can start to see the wind and you can start to see the fatigue of the ATF. It is very good to see constant pressure. They have no corner to run to. They have no excuse that they can give. And I think the fact that they tried to trap so many people as felons and the pressure that they were bringing for people to make a certain move. And some may have, but the bottom line is, it was a very, very dirty move. I think everybody could agree that that was one of the dirtiest moves of this whole thing. Now, let's say they could have went about it a different way and gave people a better option or a more heads up. Um, I don't know, but I know the way they did it, it just seemed like a straight up trap. It seemed like a straight up trap. and. I'm sure that most of you would agree that it was a straight up trap because you paid for it legally and they're trying to penalize you as if you did something wrong when they already gave uh, the consent. They wrote off a lot of stuff as being legal and then they changed their word on it for whatever. I just don't see where they are going to be allowed just change their mind. Now, I'm wondering, is it going to be Congress that writes a new brace rule and is it going to be partial? Some of the bull crap still in it. I don't know. But that remains to be seen. Stay tuned to figure out what's going on with the markup. So long story short, man, hope this video gave you some insight on what is actually going on with the pistol braces because that is what everybody wants to know. Go ahead and hit that like button if the video did help you out. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you want to stay up on the Second Amendment news, reviews, upgrades, updates, Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And to hear more about this markup, watch this video right here.